All right, today we're going to do a U2 chip IC replacement on the iPhone 5S. Um, this one has come here because it has, um, it, it will not charge. It will detect um, USB, uh, the USB cord, and it will say that it is charging. So it's got the little uh, lightning symbol, but the battery percentage never goes up. And so that means that um, the Th that's what we call fake charging, and that's one of the symptoms of U2 failure. There's other symptoms of U2 failure, and it and it's, um, can be sort of any of these. It the U2 chip tends to kind of fail partially. It's really sort of you know difficult to to nail down and be sure. Um, this case is pretty clear though because of fake charging. Um, but U2 can fail because of these reasons. One, no detect. So if you plug in the USB cord, nothing happens. It doesn't show the lightning symbol. Two is fake charging like this phone. Three would be a really rapid battery drain that's not solved by software, uh, software issues. So if you restore the phone and it continues to have a rapid battery drain, um, that could point to you too. Um, the others would be um, slow charging, where it's it's almost like the phone will charge a little bit and then stop charging and then charge a little bit, so it'll take forever to just go up a few percentage. Um, also, uh, you know, anything that has to do with sort of, you know, the USB logic interface, that's what the U2 chip does. So um, something like uh, if you connect the battery and the phone starts up without you having to actually hit the power button, it thinks that there's been a USB uh, cord plugged in, so that prompts the phone to boot. So auto boot after battery connect can be another sort of strange symptom. Just heat on the U2 chip. You know, that's, that could be another system, symptom. So all of these things uh, can point to U2 chip failure. And when you're, you know, sort of troubleshooting this sort of generic no charge problem, first is to find out if there is a history of non-Apple charger usage. So the U2 charging problem comes from damage to the chip. You can't see the damage. And it happens from using non-Apple chargers and then coming into some sort of unregulated voltage that goes up the cord and damages the chip. Uh, especially car chargers that are that are non-Apple car chargers can can be a big culprit. Um, but the good news is that the U2 chip is fairly straightforward to change in the iPhone 5S. Uh, so we're gonna try and and do that today. Yep. So this you know was sitting here this whole time and it still says 24% charge. When you are sort of trying to determine between uh, an uh, you know, is this U2, a lot of times the phone will be dead because the battery won't charge. So then you're in a situation of having to sort of troubleshoot between is this a U2 charging IC problem or is it a just a generic no power problem. And so the one sort of tool or one trick that you can use is to see if it will start with a known good battery. So a U2 problem is a charging problem. It's not a no boot problem. No boot problems like water damage, a short somewhere in the phone, or just sort of failure of the power management chip is a really common no boot failure in a lot of different devices. Those, those will not start even if you give them a known good battery um, and a known good, like a DC power supply, you're, you know you're, you're, you're putting power into the phone and the phone doesn't boot. That does not point to a U2 charging problem. So I, ha I saw a couple questions online about, you know, U2 charging um, chip replacement. If you're going to try this yourself and you're not really familiar with board repair and you haven't done a lot of micro soldering, um, you really need to make sure that you have a good quality, um, a good quality hot air station. Um, Without that, it's really easy to have kind of like a, you're, you're going to kind of like rotisserie roast your board when you try to get this chip off. With good quality hot air, it's very straightforward. I think I need to turn off some notifications. Okay. But this is a fairly straightforward repair. You do have to take the board out, and that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so here's the board. Board looks normal, and we're going to now 
desolder the back shield so that we can get to the chip. Take off the little antennas first. A lot of people ask, this tool is the Omnivice. I still have my plan to make my um, equipment video. Haven't done it yet, but it is on my radar screen. All right, so we've done this a lot of times. So we're just going to desolder the shields with hot air. Now we can look at the look under the microscope, but it'll be pretty non-remarkable, I think. All right, so this is just a regular-looking board because it has no, no, it's never been opened. It's just presented with this charging problem. And of course, the you know this. I my customers are other businesses, so they've already ruled out um, that this was a bad battery and tried a couple of batteries and would have put in a uh, new charge port. I looked at the charge port just to make sure that that's not the problem. If a charge port doesn't have physical damage, then that's not going to be the problem. All right, so there's the U2 chip, and. Now we're going to try to shield the board so that we can um, we can safely save the other surrounding components. So I my favorite little trick is to use the standard the standard iPad Mini shield that clips on and off. I use these. I have a collection of these because I work on so many minis. So all I do is just Captain tape that shield kind of generically on the board. All right, so I make, you know, a contraption that kind of looks like this. And then I'm going to do the repair on the Omnivice. Okay, let's look under the microscope and we can watch. Let's get this chip off. I'm going to add some flux just to help it come off nice and evenly. And then the key to everything is your hot air. And there's no set temperature to use. You just kind of have to develop a feel for it by practicing um, removing chips. You don't want it to come off too quickly and you don't want it to roast the board. So. You got to figure that out for yourself, and that's going to all have to do with your position and um, how, how, what kind of nozzle you have, and just sort of what your uh, what your hot air likes to do. That seems a little bit too hot and too strong, so I'm going to turn it down. All right, that looks good. And then I'm going to just come in here and try to evenly heat the chip. There it goes. That's all. Okay. Now we need to clean off the, um, we need to, oops, you guys couldn't even see that. <laughs> all right, let's clean off these pads. So we will use a little bit of braid. Let me cut some braid. You really want a thin braid. They come in ones that are automatically fluxed and some that are not. The kind that's fluxed is good. 
but I'm not sure I've ever tried the other kind, so who knows? Maybe it's better. All right, I'm gonna add some tacky flux. Just like blotting up a wine stain on the carpet. Get that out of there. It's not a big, you know, anything to get like super serious about because it's such a tiny chip and it's such tight clearance. That as long as you don't have anything that is particularly, you know, a high spot, it'll be fine. It's so really just kind of pressing it with something flat is good. You can even put hot air in here to help it sort of reflow back to normal. An example, let's do to sort of beat up our pads and smooth them out with the hot air now that we've got the, the balls actually removed. There they go. All right, that's good. I'm gonna clean that off with a uh, Q-tip, you could use a brush. Q-tips tend to leave hairs, but the clearance is just so tight. All right. Everybody's happy. Now let's go ahead and put on the new chip. So I will grab an identical chip. Hopefully everybody paid attention to the orientation. I'm going to put on some tacky flux to just sort of seat the chip. That flux melted right away. If I was, if I let it cool down, then I would get a better result um, because the the tacky flux would kind of hold the chip in place while I was soldering it. All right, now I'm just gonna come back in with the heat. And now I'm just watching the other components until I see them melt. And the, there are the chip just snapped into place so it'll find its own way pretty readily. I see some other stuff melting. I could nudge it if I wanted to sort of confirm that I'm happy with that. Good. All right. Now we will let it cool down and test it. Okay, so I'm brushing off the um, flux with a little bit of alcohol. Then for testing, we're not going to uh, put back on the shield because we might have to come back to it. 
So instead I'm just going to tape the board up to prevent it from having any shorts on the bottom of the board. Really briefly. These really are done for. I'm going to leave the antenna off and just, just want to see if the thing can charge or not. Now U2 chip replacement I think is so straightforward in and of itself once you have experience in the right equipment and know your hot air station that um, that it's that it the replacing the chip is actually the diagnostic tool that I would use. A lot of times it's like well how do you know it's the chip? You know and you could get out an oscilloscope and measure signals coming in and out of that chip if you wanted to and compare it to uh, known good. You could look at uh, an amp meter and see current draw and kind of get a better idea. Um, but I think that just replacing the chip itself is pretty straightforward. If I had to do like high throughput, like a whole, a whole bunch of these, then, then yeah, I would, I would find a way to have a kind of more definitive diagnosis if I was doing it again and again and again. Um, but so far, I think this works pretty well to just replace the chip. I think it's harder to get this dock connector reattached. What's, what's holding you up? The tape. Dock connector reattachment is key for this. All right, let's put a screen on there and see what we have. All right, we're gonna we're gonna let this hang out and come back in about fifteen minutes. All right, I have let this sit here for a while and it is charged up to ninety seven percent. I tried to put this under the microscope to see the little 97 on it, but I don't think that works. 97, can you see that? All right, 97%. Crappy digitizer, but it charged up to 97%. And we're going to declare that a successful solution to U2 no charge and replacing the charging IC. That's it.